So let's get into the word of God today. We got a little bit of time left. Maybe. All right, let's open our Bibles to two openings today. We're going to move as expeditiously as I, as I can. Uh, Mark 11 and Hebrews 10. Mark 11 and Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Thank God again for all of our guests that are here. We appreciate you being a part of our service today. Mark 11 and Hebrews 10. Okay? Okay, let's read Mark 11, verse 22 and 23. You got it? Yes, sir. Read it together. Ready? Read. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. That's good, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right, now let's go to Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Hebrews 10 and verse 23. All right? Let's read that together. Ready? Read. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let's do a favor. Switch that to the King James for me on this verse here. All right, let's read that together. Ready? Read. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. For he is faithful that promise. Amen? So let us hold fast our confession. I want to today talk about, use this for a subject, an instruction to you. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Okay? Thank you, Lord, today for the word we're about to receive. We receive it with thanksgiving. We receive it with meekness, Lord, because it's able to save our very souls. We receive the word, Lord, not as, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, your word, which works effectively in those of us who believe. And we declare today, we believe your word, every jot and tittle of it, Father, every part of it. Your word is truth. God, you cannot lie. So we receive what you have to say to us, and we will apply to our lives immediately. And thank you for the results that we shall see, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. All right, take your seats today. Lead your neighbor and say, keep speaking. keep speaking. Hallelujah. Keep speaking. God made you and I a speaking spirit or speaking spirits. The Bible says when God breathed the breath of life into Adam, Adam became a living soul. In the original Hebrew, it'll talk about uh, Adam became a speaking spirit. So God created you to speak, right? Yes, sir. And that's how God got things done on the earth, and that's how you and I will get things done on the earth. So we've been talking here for the last uh, three or four weeks. Uh, this series, I, well, the series has been about the fruit of our lips. Right. Remember how I started out talking about how uh, in uh, Proverbs, let's see, Proverbs 12 and verse 14. Give me that on the screen, please, real quick. Proverbs 12, verse 14. A man will be satisfied with good by what? The fruit, the fruit of his mouth. mouth. The fruit of his mouth. So you are satisfied with good by the government, no. by the administration, no. or by what? The fruit. the fruit of your mouth. Okay, let's look at Proverbs 13 and verse 2. Proverbs 13, verse 2. Glory to God. A man shall eat well by what? The fruit of his mouth. So you shall eat well. That, that, that's not just talking about you filling your belly up with, with taters and, you know, uh, yams and all that kind of stuff. It's talking about your life being uh, fed well by the fruit of your mouth. So how you enjoy life is based on what you speak out of your mouth. Okay? Then we looked at Proverbs uh, 18 and verse 20. Proverbs 18, verse 20. Glory to God. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from what? The fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Verse 21 goes on to say this. Death and life are in what? And those who love it will eat its fruit. So what we talked about how is that how you need to have fruit coming out of your mouth. And, but the issue with most believers, when you get into a word of faith church or a faith camp, whatever you want to call it, it uh, is that we don't have fruit out of, coming out of our mouths. We have seed coming out of our mouths. We're spitting seeds. And, and seeds don't produce anything for your life. Seeds produce something in your heart. But fruit has to come out of your mouth or out of your lips. And for fruit to be there, there must be a tree there. Remember this. This is my last message on this series here, so i got to review. So you got to have a tree. In order for there to be a tree, you got to have seed. 
So you get the seed of the word of God and then you speak the seed of the word of God into your heart. Into your heart. You're speaking it into your heart. Most of people get the seed of the word and try to speak it out of their mouths, trying to produce something. No, but that's not how it works. You're moving too fast. You speak the word of God into your own heart, into your own heart, until you believe it and you, 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 you're convinced and persuaded by the word of God. Now that you have a tree there, your tree now has fruit, and now you can release fruit from your mouth. And when you release fruit from your mouth, the Bible says that God creates the fruit of your lips. Got it? All right, I don't have time to stay there. Some of y'all looking confused. Um, I admonish you to go back over these messages. Okay? Now let me just preach all this stuff to you, and you, just, you don't go back over it. Because if you don't go back over, you're not going to get it. You don't get it the first time. Tell your neighbor, you never get it the first time. So you got to go back over it, over and over again. Okay? All right, so now, uh, Titus 2, verse 10 in the uh, New Testament for Everyone version. Let's pick this up here. All right, Titus 2, 10. New Testament of everyone, it says, they are to show good faith in everything, so that in every way they may be a what? For the teaching of God our Savior. So you and I, our lives are supposed to be a good advertisement for the word of God. So whatever the word of God says, we ought to be living it out, demonstrating. My life is an advertisement for the word of God. That's why there are things that my wife and I cannot do that maybe, maybe some other people can do. I'm not talking about sin. I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about that. None, none of us can do that. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about there are things we cannot do that we've made a quality decision that we won't do because we're, we're, we're God's advertisement right out front. For example, so let me talk about debt. So debt is not a sin. Debt's not going to send anybody to hell. Right? You understand that? And, and if you want to get in debt, that's your option. It's your choice. But for us, you see, we have to stay out of it and not depend on it because we have to be an advertisement to you of what God can do. You understand? So that's why we don't condemn anybody else if that's what you do. But we have to go through the, to the highest level of this thing. That's why for us, uh, though, it's okay for you to go to the doctor. But for us, if we went to the doctor, God wouldn't, wouldn't condemn us. He wouldn't send us to hell. He wouldn't, he wouldn't beat us. He wouldn't even be, even be disappointed in us. But he wants to use us as an advertisement of what the word can do. You understand that? So that's why in no way, shape, or form are we ever trying to condemn anybody. Or put you down or make you feel like you're not a faith person because you do whatever, whatever, whatever. We're just saying that for us, we have to go on the highest level of everything. Can y'all handle that? All right. To show you it can be done. Isaiah 62 verse 10, God tells us to go through the gates. Go, go through the gates. He says, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Take out the songs, lift up a banner for the people. In other words, our job is to say, hey, you can do it. You can do it this way. We're the advertisement. Come on in, Get, jump on in, the water's fine. God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't he will? Right? Y'all got it? Okay, now, so I preached... Uh, already four messages to you. All right, number one, you can have whatever you say. Remember that? You can have whatever you say based on Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I taught you three, three things in that. You can have the faith of God. I taught you you can speak to things and you can have whatever you say. Tell your neighbor, you can have whatever you say. Tell somebody else, you can have whatever you say. That's good. People don't want to believe that, but it, it, it's true. Who said it? Jesus. So it's stupid to argue with Jesus. Right? So you can have whatever you say. Then we went into this next message. I'm just speeding up here. The spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 We believe and therefore we speak. I talked about the spirit of faith. How you got to get way off just the letter and get over to meditating the word of God praying in tongues over the word of God until the word of God becomes real to you so that when you speak it the spirit of faith is released so that you're not just speaking out faith words you're speaking faith filled words 
A lot of people have faith words. They speak good, good talk, good faith words. They, they, they know how to speak the, the faith jargon. You know, there's faith lingo. There, there's a faith language we all have. I'm blessed and highly favored. That's faith words. But many times those words don't produce anything if they're not coming out of the abundance of your heart. If the spirit of faith is not there. So you got to spend time with God to, to let the spirit of faith uh, send these words from your mouth. All right. Number three, I preach this message entitled Confessions from a Clear Conscience. Confessions from a Clear Conscience. Romans 9 1. Get on the screen for me, please. Because this is important. Romans 9 1. I want to stay here just a little second. Just a little second. Romans 9 1. Paul says here, I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. So he said, I tell the truth. What he's, what he's about to say to them, I'm telling you the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. So I talked about how when you confess uh, faith-filled words, those words have to come from a, a clear conscience. Because your conscience is, is the gauge of your spirit. Your conscience knows whether you're lying or telling the truth. That's why people, when they, when they take a polygraph test, a lot of take the test. That, that, that needle will go crazy because they're, they're, they're not telling the truth because their conscience always tells them. I, I was thinking about this. How many of y'all remember uh, uh, high school English lit, yeah. English literature? There's a book we read, uh, most of us in this county, by Edgar Allan Poe called The Telltale Heart. Some of y'all read that, reading it now? The Telltale Heart. It's, it's about this guy uh, who had murdered this old man and... Uh, and uh, uh, he, when he murdered, murdered the old man, he took the, man, took the man's body apart and buried it uh, beneath the floorboards of the house. And he stayed in the house. And so he, he, he thought he had gotten away with it, and the police came, and they were looking for this man. Hey, where's the old man? Oh, we don't, he's on a journey somewhere. He's on a journey somewhere. But what happened, while he's sitting, sitting there talking to the police officers, um, all of a sudden he starts, starts hearing, boom, 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 boom. Now, the police officers, they don't hear it. But his conscience is still hearing that man's heartbeat to the point it gets so loud, he confesses, I did it, I did it, I killed him, I killed the man. Why? Because you can never get away from your conscience. Your conscience knows what's really happening with you. And so what happens, when, 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 remember I gave you the scripture uh, at the same time on this message, uh, Joel 3 verse 10, when God says, let the weak say I am strong. And so here you are being weak and God's telling you to say I am strong. The problem is your conscience says you're lying. Although if God said it, this must be the truth. But for you and me to speak it, it, it sounds like a lie to me at first. So I've got to spend time with the word of God, spend time meditating, spend time praying, spend time getting fully persuaded so that what sounds, what sounded like a lie no longer sounds like a lie. Now it is, it sounds like the truth that it is. Now my conscience is clear. Go back to Romans 9 verse 1. Now my conscience bears me witness in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. So now in Christ I speak the truth. You understand this here. So now when I say I am rich, I'm not, I'm not lying because I'm speaking in Christ. Oh, that's important. I'm speaking in Christ. When I say I am healed, even though uh, you might have pain in your body, you might be on a, on a crutch or a wheelchair or on a sick bed. When you say you say you are healed, you got You understand you're saying you're healed in Christ. And if you meditate that long enough and understand, you're speaking from your in Christ perspective, your in Christ image, it's no longer a lie to you. Now you can speak it and confess it because you don't see yourself in your body, you see yourself in Christ. You don't see yourself in your family line or in your bloodline, you see yourself in Christ's bloodline. Got it? All right, now, now. There's a scripture here I want to make sure, I want to bring up to you here. 2 Corinthians 1.20. 2 Corinthians 1.20. Glory to God. How do y'all know 2 Corinthians 1.20? Uh, y'all know it. It's on the screen. We're going to help you out. We're going to cheat. All right. Read it with me. It says, for all. Yes. 
All right, help me out. Get Romans 9, 1 back on the screen. Romans 9, 1 back on the screen. Okay, glory to God, glory to God. I tell the truth. I tell the truth. Say it again, I tell the truth. All right, now go back to 2 Corinthians 1, 20. 2 Corinthians 1, 20. For the promise of God in him. Are you seeing this here? See, when, when you start to see that the promises in him are yes, and in him, amen. Now you understand how you can tell the truth in him, in Christ. And the whole issue is you and I are being transformed by the newing of our mind till we see ourselves in Christ all the time. Glory to God. I'm, I'm all, I'm all, I wake up in Christ. I go to bed in Christ. I, I go to school. I go to work in Christ. I travel in what No matter what I do, I'm in Christ. And whenever I speak now, I'm speaking from my in Christ image, my in Christ perspective. And all the promises in him are yes. And in him, amen. Got it? Everybody say, I'm in him. All right, so the promises in him are yes. Okay, now let's do, the, do this. Let's look at that same verse here, 2 Corinthians 1.20, from the New Living Translation. Let's see this here, because I, I, I hit on this, I think, uh, last Tuesday. 2 Corinthians 1.20 from the New Living. You got it? Let's read together. Ready? Read. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And Did you see something right there? It says all of God's promises have been fulfilled. I remember I hit on this. I don't know if you were here Wednesday or Tuesday, but I hit on this, that, that what were promises to us from the Old Testament, what were promises to us from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have now been fulfilled in Christ. So they are no longer promises to us. They are facts, F-A-C-T-S, for us. Oh, God. You understand that? So healing for you is not a promise. Healing for you is a fact. Wealth for you is not a promise. Wealth for you is a fact. New life for you is not a promise. New life for you is a fact. Being blessed is not a promise. Being blessed is a fact. You don't have to pray, Lord, bless me. You are blessed already. It's a fact. You understand that? The promises are, they have been fulfilled. So the promises, even we pray the promise of Deuteronomy 28 and do the promise of Psalm 91. We pray the promise of, of Leviticus 26. We pray all these promises that are found in the word of God. And that's great. But you understand, you, you, you got you to start praying from the other side of the cross. You're on the other side of the cross. So you're, you're not looking for something to happen. You're looking for something that's already happened. The promises have been fulfilled. Well, Edward, if the promises have been fulfilled, then I am rich. Oh, I dare you to say I am rich. talking about going by your bank account. Oh, Only problem with your bank account is your bank account doesn't know what's already been fulfilled. You know why your bank account doesn't know? Because you didn't know. But now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Now, because you know, now you can receive and expect there to be a manifestation of what is already a reality. What is already a new creation reality in my life. You understand that? So you, if you're sick in your body, if you have a pain in your body, you're not, you don't have to go out there and say, Lord, please heal me. Do you understand that? As new, as, here we are, New Testament believers still asking God to heal us. That's like asking God. <laughs> oh, my, my kids, we were, we were 
saying, all, you know, things that make you go, huh? Why do people say stuff like, uh, they say, why do people say stuff like, boy, the sun sure is hot today. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, does it? The sun's always hot. Or there's people say stuff like, man, that rain sure is coming down. Right? But that's about as weird as us getting up in the morning and saying, Lord, bless me. Isn't that Ephesians 1 where he says he's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings? I think Ephesians 1, 3, something like that. He's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He's already blessed us. He's already blessed us. We're already blessed. But what's my problem? I didn't know it. Do you know that when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, that it took years, for two years for some people to find out? Isn't that what Juneteenth is all about, something like that? Because it took people years to find out what was already done. Um, there's, a, there's a scripture, Lord have mercy. I'm getting off track, but y'all just I'm, I'm on track, but I'm off. I'm 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 on track. Um, this scripture here, uh, John eight thirty two, eight thirty one. Let's start John eight thirty one. Watch this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, "If you what abide in my word, come on." You're my disciples indeed. Now let's look at verse 32. You all have heard this and you've read it before. You know it. Verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Give me the King James on that please. Verse 32. Okay. And the truth shall make you free. I just want to make sure we, we can go King James on his. All right. So you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Make or set. Make, make or set. Make. What's it say? Make. make. All right. People quote it and say the truth shall set you free. But no, it says the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. The truth you know makes you free. See, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, you were already set free. But once you know it, now I'm made free. You understand? When he went to the cross, when he got up from the grave, you were made rich. You were made healthy. You were made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You were made blessed with the blessing of Abraham. But now, but now once you know, I mean know, that word know is actually a, an, an intimacy word. And as a, Y'all know what I mean? It's a real, in, like, like, like Adam knew Eve. It's a no. So you have to know truth. Not heard of. Not just acquainted with, but no. No. I'll just use it. It's, it, it's y'all know the word. Okay. <laughs> it's a very intimate no. And so once you know this truth intimately now, it, it produces something in you. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. At that point, it's just a matter of time. Yes, sir. Just a matter of time. Yes, sir. Before the truth that's, that you know now begins to manifest in your life. Got it? Yes, All right. I got to keep going here. <clears throat> uh, Tuesday, that talked on this message, you can have whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Tell your neighbor, you can have whatever you want. Okay, give me Mark eleven twenty four, King James. Mark eleven twenty four, King James. Glory to God. I want you to read this here. This is a challenging scripture here, but let's read it. Ready? Read. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now he used the word there, desire. Desire isn't about your needs, it's about your wants. Right? And he said, whatever you want, 
If you believe, when you pray, you can have it. Matter of fact, not can, you shall. Now I can tell by the look on some of your faces that you're like, you're struggling with that. Because he said, what thing soever. Switch to the uh, New King James, and let's use another word here. Whatever. Whatever things. Whatever things. Say, neighbor, whatever things. Tell them whatever you want. You can have it. All right? Now, that's, that's far-fetched for some religious folk. They don't believe I can have whatever I want because, no, no, I don't want to get all that sin. First of all, Jesus Christ starts out in, verse, in this verse 22 talking about have faith in God. So he's talking to people who are going to have faith in God. So if you're going to have faith in God, you already understand you're not going to go out there trying to have somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife. You're not going to go out there trying to have some illegal thing and doing some things that's not in the will of God. You already understand that. So when he says you can have whatever you want, it's just like me if, if we're at home and my kids open the refrigerator and I, they, they say, hey, can I have that? You can have whatever you want. It's in the refrigerator. If you came to my house as a guest and you went to my refrigerator, I say have whatever you want. You go to, you go to, to, to uh, Fred's and eat buffet. You know, they have a buffet restaurant out there, Fred. You, you know, they, they, don't, they say you can have whatever you want at Fred's. Y'all know about Fred's? You can eat whatever you want. They don't put a limit on what you get. They don't say, no, 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 you can't have that. You're too fat or you don't, can't have that. you too whatever. No, they, you can have whatever you want. It's up to you. The price has been paid. And the price includes everything. I can get dessert too? Yes, it's already covered in the price. So when he says you can have whatever you want, take him for what he says. You can have whatever you want. Whatever kind of house you want. Lord, Lord, this is the Christian. Lord, give me whatever kind of house you want me to have. No, that ain't what he said. Lord, any, any kind of car you bless me with, I'll be satisfied. That's not what he said. What, what kind of car do you want? I'm, I'm going to dress you up right here. God, I know you get, it's a certain kind of guy, certain kind of guy that you, you want me to have. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Long as he's saved. Long as he's not married to anybody else. Come on now. Make sure you Holy Ghost filled too. Now you want a Holy Ghost filled too. You can have whatever you want. You can have tall, dark, and handsome. You can have short, wide, and round. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's, it, it's, it's whatever you want. Hey, that's somebody for everybody. It's whatever you want. All right. <clears throat> We look at this scripture here, Philippians 4, 6. Stay in the New King James, please. Philippians 4, 6. Glory to God. I'm telling you, that's a hard thing for most Christians to believe. They think God is some stringent, strict, tightwad kind of God that only certain things. No, you can have whatever you want. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your needs be made known. Request. Let your requests, right? Okay? Give me this same verse, Amplified Bible, please. Amplified Bible. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and everything. Watch this. By prayer and petition, definite requests. Definite requests means you define the request. You define what you want. You tell God what color you want. You tell God what year you want. You tell God how many bedrooms you want. You tell God what neighborhood you want. You tell God how tall you want him. You tell God how, how long you want her hair to be. You, you tell God all that kind of stuff. I define, I define her to God. No, I did. I define my wife to God. One day I remember my, my friend, my best friend at the time. Uh, you my best friend, you remember. He, was, he, he, he said, man... I said, man, I, you know, I, I got to get married, bro. Because I'm ready for a wife. He said, well, what you looking for? So all of a sudden, I don't know where this came from, except God must have put it in me. I said, he, he started asking about, about, you know, about what kind of height. I said, kind of like Kimberly Oliver's height. This, this is no lie. You remember Brian? Brian's asked me this. He said, well, what about, like, how long you want a hair? What kind of hairstyle you want? I said, 
kind of like Kimberly Oliver's hair. I, I kind of like, this is good, I'm serious. What about a bill? He said, what about a bill, John? What about a bill? I said, pretty much like Kimberly Oliver's bill. And I realized, man, I must want Kimberly Oliver. <laughs> I was definite in my request, and God granted the request of my lips. She didn't know it. We weren't talking. We weren't dating. There was nothing. I didn't know what this woman was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, you better be definite. Don't be talking about, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Stop that foolishness. You know, good well, you'll be complaining in seven weeks. Oh, Lord, I don't know why you gave me this one. I didn't, that ain't really what I wanted. You should have told me what, exactly what you wanted. Look, look at the scripture here, Psalm 21. Get, get Psalm 21, verse 1, and let's, let's go right to the message Bible, please. Psalm 21 and verse 1. I love this here. This is David. David was a man after God's own heart. Watch this. It says a David psalm. He says, this is what David says, Your strength, God is the king's strength. Helped, he's hollering, Hosannas. I like the way the message Bible puts that stuff. Watch verse two, watch what David says. You gave him exactly what he wanted. God wants to give you exactly what you want. Some of us need, need to sit down and really get an idea of what we want. Some of us, we don't even actually know what we want. I'm looking for a husband. You, ain't, you don't just want just a husband. I, I just want to be married. I just want to be married. You don't want to just be married. A lot of folk just be married. That ain't right. Notice he says, you gave him exactly what he wanted. You didn't hold back. God will not hold back on you. God's not holding back on you. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalm 84, verse 11. He will not hold anything. Watch this, verse 3. Verse 3. You filled his arms with gifts. You gave him what? A right royal welcome. That's what I always tell people when they first get saved. God, he wants to give you your welcome package. When you first get saved, boy, God's ready to start unloading and filling your arms with gifts and give you all kind of things right off the bat. Verse 4, he wanted a good life. You gave it to him and then made it a long life as a bonus. Somebody holler, that's what I want. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, now, since I know... That God's promises are true, they're fulfilled, right? We read that in 2 Corinthians 1.20, they're fulfilled. Then I know also that I can believe I receive when I pray. Okay, I know I can believe I receive when I pray. So as I pray, and as I begin waiting on the manifestation, now that's where I get into thanksgiving. Okay, make a request known to God with thanksgiving. Okay, Philippians 4.6, we read that. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, we saw this in, in Abraham's life. Look at uh, Romans 4, please. Romans 4. Look at verse 20. Romans 4, verse 20. This is what Abraham did. Watch this. This is what you, you and I have to do. Abraham's our father in the faith, right? He did not waver at the promise of God through. So he didn't waver at the promise through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory, Giving glory to God. Or we could say through thanksgiving. So his thanksgiving strengthened his faith. So God made the promise. He finally believed the promise. Now he, he accepts, I'm going to have this baby. I'm going to have this child. My name's already been changed to Abraham. I believe God is right. So now he gets over into thanksgiving, into giving glory to God. And every time he did that, for the years that it took for it to manifest, he was being strengthened in faith. He was growing in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, add that here. And being fully convinced or persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was also able to perform. So he became convinced. 
So many people, we stop uh, in the body of Christ, stop at the fact that God promised it. But don't keep going to the fact that God is able to perform it for me. Even when we see God doing things in other people's lives, we figure, well, they must have greater faith than I do. Do you know that you don't, I don't have greater faith than you do? Y'all kind of stumbled on that. Do you know that I don't have greater faith than you? You know we all have, the Bible says in Romans 12, 3, he's given every man the measure of faith. Oh, you must have more faith. Where, where do we get more faith from? How, how, does, how, does, how can you get more faith? You, you, you can't get more muscles. But you can build what you have. Glory to God. TJ, come here. I'm going to show you this. TJ and uh, TJ's got some muscles. Let me see who might not. Demetri, come here. Come here. Come here, Demetri. Come here. Oh, he's got muscles. Don't, don't, let, don't let the shirt. Come on, man. Give me two chairs real quick. Two chairs. Watch this. I'm going to just show you something. Chair here, chair here. Facing you up. Facing out. TJ, you stand behind this one. Demetri, you stand behind this one. All right, I want you to grab the, this chair here, just like this. Watch, let me show you. Like this, and just hold it. Straight out. Arm straight out. Do the same thing. Hold it straight out. Now, do they both have muscles? Yes. Okay, now y'all just keep on going. Okay, so. So, he's given every man, Romans 12, 3, the measure of faith. A measure of faith. So we all have faith. <laughs> right? Right? Everybody has faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Okay? Now, so as you keep working your faith, you keep working your faith, you will, you will increase your muscle strength, but it's the, still the same muscles. You got to hold it straight out now, Demetri. Straight out. Straight out. Straight out. Straight out. Straight out. Extend those arms, buddy. Extend those arms. Straight out. If, if you're tired, say you're tired. Tired. <laughs> TJ's still going. Now, all right, TJ, put it down here. Let me show you something. Remember when we talk about great faith, a little faith? Remember, here, here's Peter, see Jesus Christ on the water. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come or allow me to come to you. Jesus said, Come. So Peter starts walking on the water by faith. faith. All of a sudden, he looks at the wind and the waves, and they they get all boisterous, and he begins to sing, and he cries out, Lord, save me. Jesus Christ reaches reaches out his arm, saves him, and Jesus says, Peter, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When he says little faith, he wasn't talking about the amount of faith Peter had. Little faith means short-lived. They both have muscles. His muscles were short-lived in relation to this obstacle. I'm not picking on this. This I love this young man here. But I wasn't expecting him to hold it longer than him. Yeah, his, his man help still coming in. His voice is starting to get deep. But you understand that? Short-lived faith. So you have faith. Everybody say, I have faith. See, and the more I build and work my faith, my faith gets where it lives longer. My faith endures. So Abraham, the way he was strengthened in faith was he gave glory to God. Or through thanksgiving, Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that what you said, what you promised, it is coming to pass in my life. It is a promise. It is sure. You got it? Thank you, guys. Y'all can put those chairs back. Give them a hand. Let them. Oh, he got both chairs. That's. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it, Pastor. I got it. So Romans 4, verse 20, Romans 4, verse 20, look at it again one more time. 
He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory to God or through his thanksgiving. Okay, verse 21, and being fully convinced that what he got at promise, he was also able to perform for me, for him, for me. Everybody say for me. God can do it for me. Matter of fact, he will do it for me. Because it's a promise, right? And in Christ, the promise is already fulfilled. So he has done it for me. Do you understand that? All right, now, let's go to other scripture we talked about here today. Uh, Hebrews 10, 23. Let's go there real quick. Glory to God. I'll let y'all get home to your leftovers. Y'all tired of leftovers already, aren't you? Good. All right, Hebrews 10, 23. You can only make so many turkey and dressing sandwiches. You can only have so much cranberry disc. All right, Hebrews 10, 23. Okay, let us hold fast, y'all come back, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without, remember Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, why? For he who promised is faithful. So when he's talking about wavering here, he's talking about a hold fast your confession or keep speaking without doubting. Keep speaking without the arguments. You know, we read uh, where it says, cast down arguments. Casting down imaginations. But it, the real word is casting down arguments. So what's happening on the inside of us? When, when, when on, on the inside, when I read, he says, uh, let the weak say I'm strong. Or, or we, we say, let the poor say I'm rich. I'm rich. Or let, let the sick say I'm well. Okay? But there's an argument on the inside. I want to I say I'm rich. I want to say I'm healed. I want to say I'm blessed, but I feel this pain. Or I look at my account. Or I look at what's going on. And it just, just so there's an argument. That's, that's the, the issue of being double-minded. Now understand, when you are walking in faith, there is an enemy, an adversary, it, who it is his job to bring the thoughts, to bring the argumentative thoughts. He's coming to say, no, you know that's not true. He's going to remind you of your pain. Matter of fact, if he can help, he's going to make the pain even worse. At the time you go on right through your confession, he's going to, he's going to hit you right there in the gut. Am I right about it? Has anybody ever experienced that? Come on, don't lie to me. Have you experienced that? When you've been going through and you believe in God for something supernatural, and all of a sudden, bam, something hits you right man. I mean, I'm talking about whether it's financially, whether it's physically, whatever it is, something spiritually. You believe in God. The devil's going to come because he even, he's an adversary, and adversaries bring adversity. It's to get us to doubt. It's to get us to waver because he knows if we waver, uh, go to James chapter 1. Go to James 1 and verse 5. Glory to God. James 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, come on. Now, we can take the word wisdom out and put anything there. If any of you lacks whatever, let him ask God who gives to all men how? Liberally and without approach or without judgment. Oh, that's good right there for somebody. When you ask God, God does not judge you first and say, well, I don't know if you deserve that. I'll come over here. Somebody over here needs that. When you ask God for something, he does not go through your record and say, well, I don't know if you've been good. God is not like Santa Claus. You better watch out. You better not pout. You better watch out. I'm telling you why. God is not like Santa Claus. God does not go to check to see how much sin is in your record. Maybe that'll help somebody back over here. He does not go and check to see how many times you've messed up. If you are his child, if you belong to God, when you ask him, he loves you enough to give to you in spite of you, to bless you in spite of you, to heal you in spite of you, to prosper you in spite of you. Come on now. Your child messes up at, at school or mess up at home and they've been bad and you get ready to go out to eat. You don't say, you stay here, I'm going to eat. You say, come on, get in this car, we're going to eat. And then your heart's so soft, you say, you want some ice cream? 
Why? Because you love them past all their stuff. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? Y'all got that? I think that's Matthew 7, 11, something like that. He'll give good things to those who ask him. Okay? So when you ask him, he gives liberally without reproach. And it says, and it will be given to him. Verse 6. Verse 6. Glory to God. Y'all got verse 6? I know that computer. It's not there. I know it's a computer. But let him ask how? In faith. Let him ask how? In faith. In faith with no doubting or without wavering. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. For let not that man suppose, what, let not what man? That man who wavers. That man who's still arguing, will he, won't he, will he, won't he, will he, won't he, will he, won't he. I think he can, I think he can, I think he can, I don't think he can, I think he can, I think he will. I don't know he will. You have that argument, if you don't cast that argument down, if you don't get that doubt out of your spirit, out of your soul, you'll not receive anything from God. But if you can ask him without doubting, if you can ask him without wavering, then you will receive anything from the Lord. Did you catch that? Then you will receive anything. From the Lord. Shout anything. anything. Glory to God. Now let's go back to Hebrews 10, 23. Let's, let's round this out here. It's already 1, 2, 3, 4. Glory to God. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope or, con or the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Okay, watch this. That word hold fast in the Greek is the, is the Greek word uh, kateko or kate kateko. Okay, listen to what it means here. This word kateko is, comes from two words, kata and echo. Okay? Now, the, the kata, K-A-T-A, -A, means through or toward. The echo means hold or have. So, when he says hold fast, it means go toward what you have. Keep going through to what you have, to what you already have. Uh, you'll, you'll get it here in a second. So when he says hold fast, it means keep going through to what you have. Got it? Because you already have it in Christ. So stay through or keep going towards what you have until you hold it. Got it? All right, I'm, I'm going to come back to that in a second here. So he says, hold fast the confession. Now, confession, you know that word, homologia, comes from the word, the same word we get, uh, homologio, okay? This homologia means to agree with or say the same thing as another, okay? To agree with or say the same thing as another. So when you get the word of God, his promises, when you get... And when you agree with, don't, don't disagree with God. When he says, Jesus, uh, Peter says in, uh, uh, I think it's 1 Peter, 2 Peter 2.24, when he says, with his stripes you were healed, don't disagree with that. Don't keep saying I'm so sick. Don't keep saying I'm dying. Don't keep, no, no, don't disagree with God. Agree with him. Say the same thing he says, which is you were healed. When he says, you know, his grace, that, uh, that for your sakes he was made poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich, say that. Say, that. say I'm blessed with the blessing of Abraham. Say that. Yes. Don't say, boy, I must have a curse on me because I'm black. You don't have no curse on you because you're black. Yes. You might have a curse because you're stupid, but not because you're black. Yes. Say the same thing God's word says. Homologia. And he says, hold fast to it. Now, that word hold fast, I told you, is, is two words, kata and echo. That E-C-H-O is where we get the, our English word echo. What does echo mean? It's, it's a repetitive sound. It, 
It's when a sound has been made, you continue to hear that same sound over and over and over and over again. So when he says, hold fast your confession, he means keep repeating your confession over and over and over and over again. Every time you go somewhere, that confession is, is oh my God. When you speak, your, your voice hits a wall and comes back at you. Good God. That's, how, that, that's why you get echoes, because your sound goes out. The sound waves go out. They hit an obstacle and they come back at you. So keep speaking. And you know you're getting closer when the echo gets louder. Oh, God. I'm talking about coming out of your spirit. At first you say, I am I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I remember Creflo Dollar talking about one time when he, when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Doctor gave him a, poor, a, bad, a bad prognosis. Hey, uh, you're not going to live much longer. You got prostate cancer. And he said he went down, got it, went into his basement, told his wife, hey, I don't want no calls, nothing. Went down there with a, with a, a, jar, a gallon of water and his Bible and some tapes and began to get into the word of God, meditate the word of God, pray in the spirit. He just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And he was such, oh, you know, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. He's, he's, you're trying to force yourself to say it. I'm healed, I'm healed. But he kept doing it so long until that echo started getting louder. <sighs> until it gets... And finally, one day, he just busts out, I'm healed! And he said he ripped his shirt open, and the man, he, was, he knew he was healed. Went to the doctor and said, doctor, check me out again. And this time, when the doctor checked him out, all signs, all traces of the prostate cancer were gone from his body. Not the doctor's treatment. God's treatment. He was already healed before he got sick. But he had to get that echo going out of his spirit. He had to get his echocardiogram out of his own. Oh, my God. He died. Oh, my God. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. You get your own EKG going. My heart beats healed. My heart beats rich. My heart beats prosperous. My heart beats righteous. My heart beats blessed. My heart beats... I got my own echo. So he says, hold fast or keep echoing your confession of faith. Some people say, well, Pastor, I, I, I confess three times, you know, and nothing happened. You know, you got to keep echoing. See, when you confess, when you first start confessing, you're not confessing to, to get it out here. You're confessing to get it in here. But if you keep going. It'll get stronger and stronger. All right, watch this. Let me finish up here. He says here, uh, for he who promised is faithful. Remember, the promises have been already fulfilled, right? Okay, faithful is the Greek word apistos, P-I-S-T-O-S, which means trusty, faithful. Listen to this. Of persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business. He who promised is faithful in the transaction of business. When you are conduct, when you are speaking the word of God, when you are releasing your faith, faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. And so when you are releasing your faith, you are transacting business in the spiritual realm. What you doing? I'm working on something, man. I'm, 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 I'm taking care of business. I'm taking... You know, you know how y'all talk business. I'm, I'm, I got some business to take care of. And what, what you're doing? I'm spending time in the Word of God. I'm spending time meditating, spending time praying till I get so persuaded, convinced in my heart. When I release it now, now I'm ready to do some business in the spiritual realm. Somebody say, I'm doing business. So here it says, God is faithful in the transaction of business. He's faithful in the execution of commands. He's faithful in the discharge of official duties. God has official duties. He's God. He's, God. He's Jehovah. His name implies his duties. We call him Jehovah Jireh. Well, he's got a duty to see and to provide. We call him Jehovah Rophah. He has a duty. To heal. We call him Jehovah Nisi. 
He has a duty to give us victory. We call him El Shaddai. He has a duty to be all sufficient. When we call him Jehovah, he has a duty to be our redeemer. When he call him the great I am, he has a duty to be our everything and our all. Whenever we call God, he has a duty to fulfill. And you're not pushing God to do his duty. He wants to do. Now, let me finish up here. So, go back to Hebrews 10.23. Glory to God. So hold fast the confession of your hope without wavering. For he who promised is what? Is faithful. All right, now watch this. So if I stay in agreement with God, if I keep speaking his word, I'm going to show you something here. Angels are released to work on my behalf. Okay? Look at Psalm 103 real quick. Psalm 103. Give me 10 minutes. Psalm 103 verse 20. Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, come on, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. That word voice literally means sound. So the angels are listening for the sound of his word. So when you and I echo God's word, the angels are moving on our behalf. That's why you have to confess a homologia, his word. Don't say your words. They don't move on your words. They move on his words or they move on the sound of his words. So when he, when God speaks, I echo what God speaks. That's why that morning, June 16th of this year, when God woke me up and said, financial miracles are happening in my life every day, I begin to echo God's words. And that's why five months later, I'm exactly debt free now in five months. What I couldn't see because I echo God's words. And so angels begin to move on my behalf. They heed the voice or the sound of his word. Verse 21, watch this. Verse 21. Glory to God. Bless the Lord all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. So these angels are serving at God's pleasure. They do God's will. And his will is to bless you. Whatever God has set up for you in your life, the angels of God are going about making everything happen. Mm-hmm. The angels brought my wife back to St. Pete. <laughs> the angels, <laughs> the angels made sure she came to my barbershop <laughs> with somebody else. Not a guy. No, I ain't like I wasn't doing that. I'm talking about one of her high school friends. They came in there, and Lord, he knew. Ain't he all right? <laughs> Hebrews 1.13. Hebrews 1.13. Watch this. Hebrews 1.13. Glory to God. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Verse 14. Are they the angels, not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for those, not to, for those who will inherit salvation? So the angels are sent to minister for us. But remember, they give, heed, they give heed to the sound of his word. So when I speak the word of God, the angels go to, go to work on my behalf. They're ministering for me. My God. I, I found it interesting. I wish we had this translation up. Uh, I wish we had. I don't think we have this. But the Wycliffe translation says in this same verse here, Talks about those guys, those angels who've been ministering spirits, who minister for those who have uh, a, a healing heritage. Yes, a, heritage of health. a heritage of health. I'll say it again. Have a heritage of health. You understand that? That means health is part of your heritage. <laughs> you don't... You don't have to go find in health. You don't have to go find a healing. It's part of your heritage. It means you have a new DNA. Diabetes is not part of your heritage anymore. Lupus is not part of your heritage anymore. Sickle cell anemia is not part of your heritage just because you're black. No, 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 no. No, I have a heritage of health. All right. Okay, now. So angels work on our behalf when we speak the word of God. 
angels respond to our, to our words. Now, let me show you one more place here. Then I'm, I'm, we might quit here. Daniel 10. Daniel 10. Hurry up. Daniel 10, 1 through 3. Glory to God. Watch this. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning. How long? Three full weeks. Verse 3. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. 21 days. Now, he didn't set out to fast 21 days. He just set up to fast how long it, how long it took to get a word. Come on. Got it? Now, watch verse um, 10. Verse 10. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by this, verse where did I tell you? Ten. Verse 10, yeah. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. Verse 11. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first, first this is an angel talking. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. So angels respond to your words. The angel said, I have come to you because of your words. What are you speaking? Are you speaking anything? Are you using your mouth to declare the word of God? Are you still echoing God's promises? Are you still echoing God's reality in your life? Because if you're echoing, then God has sent, I release angels, and they're coming to you because of your words. Give me verse 12 in the, in the Living Bible, please. Verse 12, Living Bible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 12, Living Bible. Then he said, don't be frightened, Daniel, for your request has been heard in heaven and was answered the very first day you began to fast. Your request was heard in heaven. Tell your neighbor, your request has been heard. He said, from the very first day you began to fast before the Lord and pray for understanding, that very day I was sent here. That very day. That very day. So that day you made the request. Believe you received when you pray. That day... Well, why haven't I had my answer yet? One, either one, you didn't, you didn't believe when you prayed. Or two, you did believe in, when you prayed, but there's been a hold up in, in the heavenlies. If you read the story, the angel will continue to talk and say, how I was on my way here, but I got held up by the prince of Persia. There was, there was, there was a struggle in the atmospheric realm, in the spiritual realm, and, but then God sent reinforcements because Daniel was still echoing, Daniel was still praying, Daniel was still talking, Daniel was still speaking, and so God sent reinforcements to get a breakthrough in the heavens to make sure Daniel got his word from God. And if you will keep speaking, if you will keep echoing, if you will not quit but continue, God will send reinforcements to make sure you get exactly what you're requesting from All right, let's read one last place here. One last place. Mark 5, 25. Amplified. And there was a woman who had, a, who had had a flow of blood for 12 years. Keep going, please. And who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but instead, come on, she kept going to the doctors, and she didn't get better. She got worse. That happens, doesn't it? I said, that happens, doesn't it? Verse 27. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus, and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. Verse 28. For she kept saying. She's weak in her body. She's been bleeding 12 years. To, we, some of us know what it is to feel anemic. But bleeding 12 years, you don't have any idea about what kind of anemia and what loss of strength that she has. So she is weak. 
but in her weakness, she kept saying something. She kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be. I shall be. I shall be. I'm weak in my body, but I shall be. If I can just touch him, I shall be. She kept saying it. We don't know how many days it was before she got to Jesus Christ. But all those days, once she heard the report of him, she heard about him. Oh, and then I heard he's going to come down this way. No, she makes her way to him. Weak in her body, but she's going to keep on saying. And because she kept saying, her saying was strengthening her body. You didn't catch that. Her speaking was strengthening her body. Twelve years, she has zero strength in her body. But she kept saying, and because she kept confessing, because she kept speaking, her body got strong enough to get to him. And she said, if I can just only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. She kept saying. Everybody say, she kept saying. Verse 29. Immediately, immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. She knew she was healed. Why? Because she kept saying. How do we know it's because she kept saying? Now watch this. Keep going. Verse 30. Verse 30. Jesus himself recognizing himself that power proceeded from him had gone forth. He turned around and said, hey, who touched my clothes? Verse 31. 31. And disciples kept saying to him, see, they kept saying. See what they kept saying? You see the crowd around you pressing from all sides and you keep asking who, who touched you? Verse 32. But still he kept looking. She kept saying and he kept looking. <laughs> if you keep it up, he'll keep it up. Oh my God. <laughs> to see her who had done it, verse 33, watch this. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, through though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before him and told him what? The whole truth. Verse 34. And he said to her, Daughter, my faith. Huh? Oh, your faith. So what he's saying is, Daughter, I didn't have anything to do with this. You kept saying something. Her faith was demonstrated by the fact that she kept saying something. When you really have faith, you'll keep speaking. When you really have faith, you won't change your confession. You won't waver in your confession. You won't stagger in your confession. You'll keep saying the same thing. I am healed. Oh, I am healed. Oh, I am Your trust and confidence in me springing from faith in God has restored you to health. Go, I like this, go in or into peace and be continually. She's going to keep healing. And freed from your distressing bodily disease. She kept saying, he kept looking, and the healing power kept going. Everything got restored. And he said, your faith did this. Not Jesus' faith. Your faith. In other words, your faith will receive or take everything God has for you. Why won't God do it for me? What do you mean, why won't God do it for you? God's already done it for you. Your faith just has to take it. And to do that, you've got to keep speaking. From a, from a clear conscience. God, I am what your word says I am. He said to her, look, look at verse 34. Give me 34 in the New King James Version. Go back. I like this. No, give, give me the King James. Give me the, I, I like this word better. Your faith has made you whole. I like that. Your faith has made you. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. So your faith will make you something. You got it? Not God's faith. God's already exemplified his faith when he gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross. That was his faith in action. When he raised from the dead, that was his faith in action. Now it's your faith that brings things to pass in your life. 
when you keep speaking, when you keep declaring, when you don't waver, the angels of God, they go to work bringing things to pass in your life. They got to make, make arrangements and shut things down and move things around and move people out of the way and do whatever, whatever, whatever. They got to they bring a car down your path or they got to make some whatever. They got to bring a house, make somebody move out of town or whatever. Put out, whatever. The angels get to moving, they get to moving, they get to moving. All because your faith is keeping those guys working. When you keep echoing, when you keep speaking, it's all a matter of time before everything manifests in your life that you've been asking God to do. You'll eat good by the fruit of your lips. You'll be satisfied by the fruit of your mouth. Did y'all receive anything from that today? Well, give God a hand. That's all I got for you today. Come on, give God a praise if you receive that today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't change your confession. People have attacked faith. They've attacked and say you the name it, claim it people. You're the word, the blab it, grab it. You're the confess it, possess it people. And they say that as if it's something derogatory. And yet those same people who will say they're saved, they love the Lord, got saved by confessing. They possess something that they didn't have before. That's why when people get saved, it didn't say, tell them to confess that they're a sinner. But they are sinners, aren't they? But he didn't say, tell them confess that they're a sinner. He said, confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, he wasn't Lord. He wasn't Lord, was he? Not for them. But he says, confess him as Lord. You confess something that wasn't a reality to you a minute before you did it. So you understand how this works. That's how you got saved. That's how you got saved. And it's how you get everything else to manifest in your life along the way. If you believe and don't doubt in your heart, it'll all come to pass in your life. Glory to God. Now, Father, today, thank you for the word. Your word is alive. Your word is powerful. Your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Your word knows how to get in there and divide asunder everything between soul and spirit joints and marrows. Your, know, your word knows how to even talk about and look at the thoughts and intents of our heart. Your word knows how to find where there's unbelief and doubt in us. Well, we've been speaking faith words, but they haven't been faith-filled words. And we thank you that, Father, you're, you're not holding anything against us, that you know how to work us, how to work on us, work with us. You know how to get us to a point where we really are speaking faith-filled words. You even know when we're trying. Thank you, Lord, that when we are making effort to live by faith and walk by faith, that you see that and that you come along and you bring help. You bring messages like we've heard this month to show us maybe some areas where we've been missing it. Show us the issue about our consciences to show us the issue Father about where there might be unbelief and I thank you that Father as you have done that for us we now know what to do and so I ask you Father that each and every one of these your precious people would now take all that we have received all that we've learned and apply it in our lives the complete package and that God no matter what you begin to talk about next month and no matter what you talk about in the, in the coming days that we'll never forget this basic fundamental way of operating in the kingdom of God that we'll know we can have whatever we want we can have whatever we say that we have the faith of God that we can talk to things that we have authority and dominion in this earth father you said Lord that God we can decree a thing and it'll be, it'll be established for us 
and light will shine on our ways. You said whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You have given us in the Lord authority on earth and in heaven. Wow. Thank you for that. And I pray, Father, that you'll show each person, even areas of our lives, where we need to go and apply this right away. Places that we've been asking you to do something, when you've been saying, no, you've already given us power over all power of the enemy. And that we'll now turn and use our authority and our dominion to push the devil right up out of our lives. Thank you now for each person. And I pray, Father, they've been blessed. We've all been blessed. And we'll continue to grow and increase from it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Give God a great praise again. Amen.